could you just take take the moment to just quickly introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm the Cosmic Collector. Uh, you can call me Brandon, though. And is that it? Like, what else do I need to... That was just perfect. Anything? Sorry. Yeah, I just okay, needed sweet. that, like, sound bite. Okay. Sorry. I'm trying to find All my good. question. I was making sure. Here we go. Okay. So this is going to be a little bit of a long question for you. So you could try to... You could just talk about it as much as you want. Uh, just so, like, people know. And I'm sure, like, y'all, your fan base knows pretty deeply the answer to this question already. Yeah. But what does your history with, like, Batman comics look like? What is my history with Batman comics? Well, it all it all started with like Batman the animated series. That's probably where it started for most people, and like the Justice League, um, as well as like the two thousand three Batman. So that's what got me like into comics. Uh, but when it came to like the actual comics, I kind of just picked up whatever. Deadpool actually is what got me like really into comics, and then from there I kind of branched out. And then I didn't really, I wasn't really feeling Marvel as much. And so I picked up a Batman comic. I don't remember exactly which one. I think it was just a random issue um, from like Grant Morrison's run, I want to say. It was just a random, yeah, random issue. And I was like, oh, Batman's dope. Like I like him and everything else. So like, like I want to read more. And I just started picking up trades. And then I took a really long break from comics while I was in like high school and college. And then when I got out, I like started making adult money. And I was like, all right, I want to get back into this. And so I picked up Scott Snyder's Court of Owls and that got me like I was in I was in deep at that point because it's ridiculous. He had such an amazing start to the new 52. I was I was hooked from the beginning. No, that's really funny. I have a very similar experience. Like Court of the Owls, experience. that's exactly what like got me back into it. I graduated, uh, made some money, and then like hopped on that quarter. I bought the Scott Snyder omnibus. Well, first I bought Long Halloween, and I'm like, after I watched the Batman movie, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. And then I bought the Scott Snyder on the bus, and I was like, bro, oh, my God, this is this bro. is something else. It's so um, good. And, like, the live action movies, too, kept me, like, invested while I was reading, so I totally get it. Exactly. Um. Okay, so next question. Uh, this is, like, going to be a little bit of a multi-pronged question. So you have a very extensive uh, understanding of, like, post-New 52 Batman compared to a lot of people. Um, I think you read like a lot of I don't even know what it's called like Rebirth and then like um, something I think before Rebirth. 15, it was like, it's like Frontier ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of continuity going on in Batman comics and we're specifically talking about Zdarsky's Batman run which to me the more I learned about Batman's continuity feels almost like a love letter to these kind of like post New 52 Batman stories. Um, so I guess more specifically my question is what Batman stories do you feel are most important to know before reading Chip Zdarsky's Batman? That's a good question. Specifically Chip Zdarsky's. Um, I think Tenian's entire run is pretty important just because it's what leads you directly into it. But when it comes to actual like Batman continuity, I think you definitely need to knock out ones like Under the Red Hood. Um, R.I.P. Batman R.I.P. is probably the most essential book for Zdarsky's run just because it introduces uh the Batman of Zer and R um and it kind of goes into like that mental health aspect of like why that why that character is so important to Batman and to Bruce and um so that's really important to, to Zdarsky's Under the Red Hood's more important to you know Red Hood and like his aspect of the Bat family um I think Long Halloween and Dark Victory are more important of understanding like his detective side and his introduction to Robin that's my like key like robin origin you know is um uh dark victory but when it comes to the darsky the first volume it's mostly like fail safe which i guess uh tower of babel would probably be another good one to read because that really like sets into motion like oh batman has a contingency plan for all these different people like in the justice league that really like drives the point like this is the contingency for himself you know and that's what fail safe is and then moving into the second volume, it, I think it's, I, well, I like Sadarshi's run, but I also think he took a chance to hop on that multiverse train that everyone is on right now, which I know like every movie's doing it, every show. Um, and it was cool to see. And it was only one issue. So it's not like it was the whole thing. But um, no, it was really interesting. And especially seeing Alfred again was really dope. But I think, yeah, Tenians is definitely a big part. I guess uh, for me specifically reading this Batman run, 
there were like two pretty big pieces of context that I felt like I was missing out on. First is like Tom King's context. Um, obviously, Alfred dies. Then is also Tom King's context. I think Batman and Catwoman have a pretty extensive relationship that falls yeah. apart. And then I think it was Tinian's run. I'm not sure where. I, th- I think it's Joker War where Batman is like no longer a billionaire anymore. Um, I think that's, I don't know which run that is specifically, but I guess my question would be more specifically, how did you feel about the continuation of like those two specific threads, the threads of Batman no longer being a billionaire and Batman and Catwoman's relationship being explored more in this story? So um, how did I feel about him not being a billionaire? I think it's, I think it's great. Um, like we've had this billionaire Bruce Wayne that kind of relied on money for like almost all of Batman continuity ever, as well as Alfred. He always relied on Alfred, you know? So I think not only the loss of his fortune, but the loss of his, basically his father and his mentor pushed him to like be his own person and not only like strive to be a better Batman, but strive to be a better Bruce. And I feel like it, he was sinking into that hole of like, I'm just Batman now. But this, it like pulled him out. And now he has to be Bruce for his kids. He has to be Bruce, like, um, because he doesn't have his fortune anymore. So he has to figure out another way to, you know, continue his mission. And then, like, why is Catwoman and Batman's relationship so important? I don't know where he's going with, with their relationship, to be honest. Like, I feel like no writer wants them to be happy at this point, And it's, like, really frustrating. But Tom King really had us hooked and then pulled the whole, the whole bait and switch with the wedding, which I did not like, but I still like King's run. Um, and then we had little tidbits and Tinians, but really she was off doing her own thing. I'm glad she's back, but the fact that she's back and now they're going to war just is, it's hard to, it's hard to like read because, you know, I've wanted them to be together for so long, but also it kind of drives this aspect of like, kind of like a two parents arguing. I don't know if you've read the new battle lines issue. They were arguing and, um, the bat family was there and they're like, Oh no, mom and dad are arguing again. And it kind of, it kind of like is giving us little hints to maybe they will be together and they'll resolve this, you know, and they'll actually be a bat family, but one, one can only hope. For sure. That makes a lot of sense. I guess, uh, kind of catapulting off of that Catwoman question in Zadarsky's run, uh, especially in the Batman of Gotham, uh, or the multiverse, he goes to the other universe, he sees that Catwoman, and I think he comes back to Catwoman and he's like, I saw another version of you and I still loved her, right? Mm-hmm. It seems like that thread of like, he is deeply in love with this woman is still there. And it seems like you're a huge fan of their relationship. So I guess maybe compared to Zadarsky's run, I'm not sure. I think maybe it was King's right before that. I'm not quite sure. How how does that feel comparing their relationship and Zadarsky's run to maybe the runs before? directly before uh, Zdarsky's run? And what do you like about it? And what maybe more so do you dislike about it? Well, what I what I like most about the relationship is just like, it's kind of like the, um, like the Batman Black, or not Batman, uh, Spider-Man Black Cat, like whole situation. Like they're, one's a hero, one's a villain, but they're not like a bad villain. You know, it's just someone who's taking from the wealthy to like, further themselves which is still a crime and that the point is like both spider-man and batman are never gonna let that slide because they're always gonna you know they're always gonna want to stop the crime no matter how small or big the crime is and i think that was a big point for like um her leaving him at the like on the rooftop when they were supposed to get married was he was never going to not be batman and i think he wanted her to stop being catwoman which she like was like okay but like you want me to stop being myself, but you won't stop being yourself. And he wouldn't make that compromise. And then later on, we, um, we see, like you said, we see them, him like confessing at, after he got back from the other um, universe. And she was like, this doesn't change anything. Like, yeah, that was another version of me, but we still have the same problem that we're running into. You're never going to not want to be Batman. And it's always going to conflict with what I'm trying to do. And it's that's a part that I dislike because it's true. Like it's, you're never, we're never going to get a happy Batman because what he does is it just, there, there's not a lot of room for happiness. Um, it's, it's kind of like uh, they use like Dick Grayson as an example. They're like, well, there is room to be happiness, but Dick Grayson isn't Batman. 
Like he, he lives in this like bright blood Haven. He's got Batgirl. Um, it's just, it's, I feel like it's a different tone and Batman's just went through too much and lost too much. And I think he lets that get to him and he just, he can't see himself be happy because every time he's tried, it's failed like drastically. For sure. I really like that answer. That was great. <laughs> um, and so now we're going to get down to talking about something I've been kind of, I initially wanted this video to be about, um, I'm going to probably mispronounce it, but you did explain this a little bit, um, but Batman of Zerao, who is Batman of Zerao? And after, you know, reading Batman R.I.P. and then reading Zadarsky's run, how did that, was there a lot of excitement for you as someone who's kind of more familiar with this character, seeing and explored more in Zadarsky's run? So who is Batman of Zernar? Uh, which I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right either. It's a weird, it's a weird name. But um, from my knowledge, initially Batman of Zer Zernar was an alien, like an alien that like took the form of Batman. It was, it was, this is like long time ago, like 60s, I think, 70s, when is when he first appeared. And he was, yeah, like some alternate version of Batman, like alien. But um, when Grant Morrison rewrote him, he was a alternate personality that Batman created in his subconscious to defend himself from mental attacks. And it's basically Batman without the Bruce Wayne. It is just full, like, Batman. So he keeps that on lock in case he feels like Bruce Wayne is holding him back or someone's targeting Bruce Wayne's subconscious. He can activate the Zer&R, and it's like a a mental defense system for him. And he, like, trained himself. I believe he locked himself in, like, a tank for, like, a week in complete darkness and just meditated to like achieve that mental state. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty dark. And in Grant Morrison's run, it was a way of defending against uh, Dr. Hurt, I believe. And uh, what they were doing that I don't remember exactly, but they were like, they were mentally like traumatizing and basically like doing a whole lot of stuff to mess with them. What, you know, Batman villains do to him. Uh, but in Zdarsky's run specifically, it was failsafe was created by the Batman of Zernar. It wasn't created by Batman. It was when he was in this state, he was like, oh, I need a contingency for if, you know, bat like Bruce Wayne Batman ever goes rogue and kills someone. So he created Failsafe, and that's why he switched to Zer&R to stop him, because he was the only one who knew how, because he created him. And it was super interesting, because Bruce does, like, it's almost like he's battling with his other personality. Even though he created him, he hates being him, because he knows if he goes full Batman, it's hard to, like, come back. Um but yeah, it's super interesting to see. And I like how he kind of made that contingency for himself, just like he did for the others. It shows that he he fears not only that Superman's dangerous, Wonder Woman's dangerous, Aquaman's dangerous, he thinks he himself is dangerous. And um, I just think that's really interesting, especially in like a mental health aspect. For sure. Yeah, I didn't know anything about the origin. So before reading this book, it, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of like mysticism, you know? Mm -hmm. And like kind of like the I don't know what it's called like the uh, mystic arts uh, cosmic oh, yeah. kind of side of stuff. I I like I think the reason I love Batman so much is because he's like such a grounded character, you know. I, and so like seeing Batman of Zeranar in this story, I didn't know him, and it felt kind of more on the mystic cosmic side. But I think now that I know, like oh, it is actually more of like a self conditioning thing. So like, mm -hmm. it's learn. yeah it has nothing to do with like the magic or nothing like that bro just like sat in a tank for like a week and like meditated it into his mind it was crazy alfred yeah. pulled him out in the story and he was like he was like i told you not to pull me out and he's like sir it's, it's been a week you've been in there for a whole week and i just thought that was crazy that is that is insane i did not know that that definitely makes me appreciate it more yeah. um okay moving on next question um one thing i noticed is that tim drake has a pretty significant role in Zdarsky's Batman run. I don't know anything about Tim Drake. The only Batman comics I've read with Tim Drake in it is actually Nightfall. Um, and that's like, what, like 40 years ago? Um, so I don't know if you're more familiar with Tim Drake and what's going on in the world of Tim Drake before that, but how did, maybe, do you feel like the, because he, he felt like he had a very epic kind of story, you know, having mm -hmm. the ability to come to terms with his like own interpersonal relationships with his boyfriend, and then, like, also realize, like, okay, like, I am something without Batman, and now he needs me to save him. And seeing him, like, traverse the multiverse and come through and, and finally save Batman, and they have that really tender hug at the end. I thought that was a really cool moment. Like, that that definitely, like, brought a little tear to my eye. Um, 
question is reading this Batman run, what was going on with Tim before that you were liking? And how did you feel about Tim Drake in this run versus maybe what was going on with him in previous runs? All right. So what did I like about Tim Drake prior? And what do I like about him now? I, I absolutely love Tim Drake. Uh, I, he Before I really started like getting into the Bat family and I was just reading Batman, I didn't really know too much about him. So I wasn't that into him. But the more I learned, I was like, wow, this he is genuinely the best Robin. Like my favorite is Dick Grayson, but like from a like comparative standpoint, he's the best Robin that Batman's had. He was the only Robin to seek out the mantle of Robin. Um, he was the only one to figure out Batman's identity. Um, it was, it's just interesting because he, he was at the circus the night that Dick Grayson's parents died and he had watched Dick Grayson perform. So he, he's the one who figured out from his moves that Dick Grayson was Robin and then put it together that Dick Grayson was with bat with the brace bruce wayne bruce wayne must be batman so when jason todd died batman was getting like extremely aggressive you know beating like the crap out of people like to the point of like death like it was bad and tim drake knew that so he found him and he was like hey like you're going down this dark path you need robin and so he you know he took him in but when it comes to like rebirth i think it was he was really prominent in detective comics and like their little team they have was like Clayface and Batwoman and all that. And they were, he was like their technical expert. Uh, Batman brought him in because he wanted to be Red Robin. Even after everyone was like, no, I'm doing my own thing. Tim was always like loyal to Batman. And he was like, look, I'm still here for you. Even if I don't agree with you, I'm here. And then he sacrificed himself and Batman thought he died in a, a lonely place of dying. I think it was called. It was like volume six or something. Uh, he sacrificed himself and he was actually just transported to a different, well, that's a different story, but uh, yeah, Batman thought he died. He eventually came back and same moment. They like, he like hugged him and it was really like heartfelt. Then moving on to like the newer stuff, uh, Tim Drake kind of went on his own journey. Like you said, um, you know, he, he, uh, he came out, which there's a nice little issue in uh, urban legends where he comes out to Batman and it's probably one of my favorite interactions between him and Tim Drake, because he, he basically says like, I I've known this whole time. Like I'm, I'm Batman. Like it doesn't matter. You're still my son. And I like, I love you type of thing. And it was just like, you, it, I love when those writers give Batman that personality. Cause he really does care. Um, even though he gives off this persona, like he doesn't, you know, and um, moving on to like Zdarsky's run, I think all that stuff just transferred over. Like he's always been there for Bruce and he knows when Bruce needs him even if he won't ask for help. And so he knew Bruce was lost in this other universe and he was going to do anything to bring him back because when Tim was going through a tough time with his, his own sexuality, Bruce was there for him. When he was worried about everyone else, Bruce was the one person he wanted to approve, like no hesitation approved. And it was just, it was like, I'm going to be there for him now because he's always been there for me. And I think that was probably the best aspect of it. And that hug at the end was just, it was, yeah, I was like, oh my God. But yeah, that's why I like Tim Drake. Yeah, knowing that context, it, it adds a lot more. I Like I said, I haven't read much. So like you explaining that even just made me feel the impact of that story way more. Um, okay, next question. Um, more of a general one. What elements of Zdarsky's Batman run did you resonate with the most? Most first off I, I the art which wasn't him it was jorge jimenez is one of my favorite artists of all time anything with him in it like i like even if the writing is not good i will read the entire book for his art but luckily zadarsky's writing was amazing as well um but specifically zadarsky when it came to failsafe i like that he brought back sir and r and you know the mental aspect um i thought failsafe was an amazing villain because like it's the one thing that's supposed to beat Batman. So how is Batman going to beat him, you know? And it also had, it was Batman's like personality as well. So it had contingencies for the Justice League when they came to hell. Uh, he stabbed Superman with kryptonite. Um, he was taking down everybody. It was crazy. But I thought it was very action packed. I think Zdarsky handles the action of Batman really well. And he handles the Bat family really well with Tim Drake in the second volume. And even though he did do the whole multiverse thing, which we is getting kind of overplayed, 
uh, he did it in a very like tasteful sense. You know, we got to see these Batmans that we love, that we've loved growing up. We we saw Adam West, the animated series, and it made a lot of things canon. You know, we have Arkham Batman now. Like we know he's alive. We know he's still there, um, which is really cool to see. And again, it was really Catwoman, like really nailing in that point of Catwoman and Batman's relationship and how it's just like, are they, are, aren't they? And that's moving directly into battle lines. And like, are they going to resolve this? How is Gotham going to suffer based on this argument? And it also split up the Bat family a lot I don't, uh, in battle lines. Um, but yeah, I really like Zarashi's run. It's mostly just, it's probably because of the action in general. I really like the action of it. I did not like the suit in the second volume. I understand the concept because, you know, he's in another universe. He can't just build his own bat suit. But the, the bike helmet and the weird blocky symbol was not it for me. But besides that, I really liked it. I don't understand why they cut off his hand, though. Like, that's going to be a whole... It's it's pretty cool, though, because we now get to see, like, he's going to develop a whole bunch of gadgets for it and all kinds of stuff, you know. But that's crazy that he lost his hand. You know, we're 40, 50 years into this continuity. And then Batman finally <laughs> finally loses his hand. No, yeah, I. Uh, it's kind of funny because I thought the suit reminded me a lot of Batman Earth One, a little bit, uh, kind of the homemade look. But I do not like the Earth One suit. I I don't know what it is about it. Like I think the tri, it's like a almost kind of like a not a tri. Which one? Suit. There's three of them. The one that has like the bright yellow kind of like hexagon bat. Okay, symbol. yeah, I don't like that one either. I uh-huh. like the one that looks more like the Batman ink, like the circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that one's like towards the end of it, right? Mm-hmm. yeah i that one i was like more so a fan of but like i i, I just something about the bad suits in earth one just really did not click with me uh, and yeah. so like this suit reminded me a lot of earth one a little bit because it had that homemade look but i thought it was better <laughs> That's Anyways, fair. Yeah. um no that was a great answer as well um cool next question as someone who has read so much batman and you've kind of mostly answered this question already but if you had to like tell someone uh context right not even context just like someone walks up to you and they're like hey man i haven't read a lot of batman comics i'm about to read batman they'll say by chip zadarsky i heard it's a great number one what would you say to them i i would say great story i'm i'm a i'm a continuity like like i don't know like i'm really strict on continuity not for other people just for myself like i have to read everything prior to understand because like i don't like having a little tidbit of information and being like what is that from now i have to go six volumes back and figure out what that's from so i've read all the way from the first volume in new 52 to the newest volume of batman but for like new readers i think zadarsky is a good point to jump on i would honestly recommend starting at tenny and over zadarsky i think you can kind of skip tom king's even though it does have the wedding um I think you can kind of pick up on context clues of Batman and Catwoman's relationship uh, just through Tinian's. But I think that really like, I think it segues nicely over to Zdarsky's, but for a new reader, yeah, just pick up, pick up fail safe. It's a, it's a really fun story to read. And if you don't, if you're not like a stickler for continuity and you just want a really exciting Batman book to read, I think that's fail safe is probably your best bet. It's so action packed. The villain's awesome. You get to see Superman, you get to see Tim Drake, you get to see Nightwing. You get all these characters. It's it's a fun one. So I'd say, yeah, go for it. And uh, let me, I need to write this down. What, I, Tinian, is it Tinian's Detective Comics? Uh, His Batman run. His Detective Comics run is really good as well. His is the one with uh, Tim Drake, like that I was talking about, like um, when he like died, that was his Detective Comics run. It was Rebirth. And then after Rebirth, it was like the Infinite Frontier. That was him. He wrote the main Batman run. So he introduced Punchline, he did Joker War, um, he introduced Ghostmaker, all those characters. Okay, perfect. I wrote that down because I need to remember that. Awesome. Uh, I, this is like kind of the last question I have. We've got a lot of good stuff here. But what do you like more, uh, Batman Failsafe or the Batman of Gotham, I think it's called? I haven't read um, the new one yet, so I'm, I'm not. But like between those two, which one are you more of a fan of? I'm going to go fail safe. I think, I think Batman of Gotham had some really like uh, exciting moments. Like I can pinpoint a lot of exciting moments, but I think fail safe had the overall more like engaging story. Um, but yeah, I like, I like both of them equally, but if I had to pick one, I'd go fail safe for sure. See, that's interesting. Cause I, 
I think I would go Batman of Gotham, but now that I know more context, I think Failsafe might have that kind of edge, especially if you like know more about Batman. It seems like it's way more rewarding. But as someone who like didn't know much about Batman and then go into the Batman of Gotham, it felt more approachable. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, for sure. It's just nice. It's a lot more interesting when you like know about like just that mental aspect of it and him like battling and just the contingencies that he has for everyone else. Like it's super interesting seeing him fight one for himself. Like that's really cool. Um, plus we got that little tidbit at the end with like Penguin and like him going into uh, his own series, which was super interesting as well. No, yeah, that Penguin stuff was like kind of out of left field. I didn't expect to see it coming. I when I first started reading Failsafe, I didn't know the direction it was gonna go in. So like with the death of Penguin and that kind of like grounded bat monologue, it felt like a very like back to basics Batman story almost. And then mm-hmm. you know there was the failsafe escalation and the kind of more grandiose spectacle but i was really digging failsafe at the beginning of it and then it kind of lost me with failsafe especially at the last act of the book where like failsafe just kind of take i i'm just kind of done with books where like the villain just takes over everything you know and it's like okay you know Gotham's- yeah it happens in gotham too much like uh the villain takes over everything in like every book <laughs> It's like Gotham can't catch a break. What well, we had Joker War, we had Fear State. We in Tinian's Detective Comics run, the Victim Syndicate took over everything. In uh, Tom King's run, Bane took over everything. In Snyder's run, I think it was who was it in Snyder's run? Bloom at one point. The Court and of Owls at another the, point. The Riddler and Zero. The years. Riddler, um, the Joker and Riddler War. They both took over everything. Yeah, it just it happens so much that it's like what are the stakes at this point like gotham and what is the insurance like in gotham because i bet it's mad expensive um wait what was it i just read it um they were talking about if batman oh the batman who laughs it was just a funny little panel that i read um uh, alfred batman's like you know chasing criminals things are breaking like they normally do and alfred's like uh, I wonder if the city has like Batman insurance and then the whole fight happens and then Batman's like, yes, they do. It's called Dark Knight insurance or something like that. I was like, that's funny. <laughs> you know, kind of different topic now, but I think that was like one of the most interesting things to me about uh, the White Knight. Um, I don't know if you've read it, but they have the whole concept of a, like, I think it's the Bruce Wayne uh, fund, right? That's supposed to insure all the damage going on in Gotham. And then you find out that like corrupt politicians are kind of tapping into that fund and redistributing mm-hmm. it in the wrong ways. I thought that was an exploration of like uh, Batman's destruction in a way that I didn't really think about. White Knight's amazing. Like for real, I love White Knight and just exploring that, like how fast the city turned on him. Like, you know, Joker has been murdering and going on a rampage for years. And he's like, oh, I'm good now. I'm sane. And everyone's like, oh, okay, sweet. Run for president or run for mayor. And then Batman's like, like everyone hates him now. Even like the, his own Bat family turned against him. And it's like, no, like I know who this guy is. He's tricked us before. Why are y'all not believing me? And I think it was, it less showed like the problem with Batman and it showed more like the problem with Gotham and like how quick they are to like change their allegiances. And I'm reading Justice League right now by Scott Snyder and uh, Lex Luthor just like got the whole like, perpetua thing and he's introducing doom to the world and he's like you can i'm giving you all these weapons to choose justice or to choose doom and everyone's choosing doom and i think that speaks volumes for like this the world that they live in like you see these heroes save you every day and you're still gonna pick to turn on them but also it makes sense because like again you see these gods in the sky and you just want this chance to feel stronger because how can you ever be as strong as superman you want to be able to protect yourself and not rely on these heroes to protect you every time. So I can see both aspects of it. Yeah, bro, that's a bar right there. That, that's, oh, that's it. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, that's that's basically it. I feel like we got a lot of good stuff here. I don't really have any more questions, but if you have like any closing thoughts, anything about Zadarsky's run or just Batman in general, you want to say, you know, pop off. Man. Yeah. I love Zdarsky. I uh, I genuinely want to read his Daredevil run now because everyone's been telling me it's good and, you know, he's killing it with Batman, so I know he's probably killing it with Daredevil. Uh, I'm excited to see what he does next and, yeah, love me some Batman. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, I, I no really problem. Appreciate it. I'm gonna it stop. was fun. Let me stop recording. I might do that. Oh, there it is.